created this week with minimal effort on my part. It's time for another edition of Fast Facts Live. That's right, everyone. We've got more trivia for you this week. And this time, I wrote a grand total of two questions. I'm your host, your quiz master of ceremonies, Dan O'Keefe. And here with me, as always, the man running the show who wrote the normal allotment of questions is Tom Hillmeyer. Hi, Tom. Hi, Dan. What was it like putting work into the show? I actually enjoyed it this week. I got my stuff in really early. Oh, good. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I got my stuff in before we had a bunch of people submit stuff for questions. Yeah. So the reason that I only wrote two questions this week is because I'm lazy, but also because we have a round submitted by patrons, uh, and that will be, you will see that later in the show. I don't want to give away the goose, as I assume Don Knotts said in that golden goose, goose that laid the golden egg movie. Uh, and also because my grandpa emailed me a round of questions. He played last week, uh, so he got the bug and started writing rounds of questions. He sent me one round of questions in an email, and then two days later sent me another round of questions. So he has just taken the work off my back, and I love it. It's great. Is this, is this the grandpa that was on Jeopardy? It is, yes. Okay. My grandpa, who uh, was in a senior tournament in Jeopardy, got all the way to the finals, came in second. Uh, he just didn't have enough to bet in Final Jeopardy to win. Oh. The headline in the Northbrook Star, our local paper, the day after the episode aired, Local Man Loses. <laughs> now, you probably know how to play Jeopardy, but in case you don't know how to play Fast Facts Live, here are the rules. Hello, I am Charty. Welcome to season six of Fast Facts Live. Here's how to play. There will be five rounds of five questions each. You will have 20 seconds to answer each question. There is no penalty for guessing. So if you don't know an answer, guess. You follow along and answer in Charty Bot. When you submit an answer for a question, Charty Bot will automatically move you forward to the next question. You can check the letterboard in the menu in Charty Bot. No matter where you are, hitting resume will bring you back to answering questions. You can double or nothing one round per game. Charty Bot will ask you at the end of each round if you want to use it. If you got every question correct in that round, your score for that round will double. If you got at least one question wrong in that round, you will get zero points for the entire round. You can wager between zero and ten points for the Hail Mary question after round five. If you answer incorrectly you will lose the amount you wagered, so wager cautiously. A tiebreaker question will be asked to everyone after the Hail Mary, but will only apply to teams tied for first place. Don't cheat, think fast, and have fun. Welcome to Fast Facts Live, good luck. So that's how you play Fast Facts Live. Also, happy Cinco de Mayo, everyone. Uh, I don't think I could have said it whiter than Cinco de Mayo, uh, but in spirit of Cinco de Mayo, I have translated poorly the name of Fast Facts Live into Spanish, uh, so thank you for playing Hechos Rapidos En Vivo, which directly translates to Quick Facts Live, according to Google Translate. I took French. Not by choice, by force. By my mother, who's watching, because she, the official language of the Olympics is French. She wanted me to be an Olympic translator. I do not know French. How did France get to be the, have the official language of the Olympics? Well, think about it. It's the early, late 1800s, early 1900s. France is like, oh, uh -huh. talk to us. We have the best language here. Because they're not going to use Greek. Nobody speaks Greek. It's all Greek to me. Um, okay. And then English wasn't, hadn't colonized the world totally <laughs> yet. Culturally, I mean, physically England had colonized the world, but culturally they had not yet. Um, mm. And uh, French, British Parliament is technically still in French. What? There, I read something about this recently. Like whenever they <laughs> invoke a new parliament or like they d dissolve parliament, they have to say something in French. Like, that's how legally it's like, it's like, Parliament works. It's kind of like Congress does stuff in Latin sometimes. Or something. Yeah. 
it's kooky. <laughs> so uh, that's how I assume because they thought it was that like, is so the upper fun. class language, French. I love how it's like, we're going to make the Olympics French and then subsequently lose two world wars. <laughs> yes, it's perfect. <laughs> anyway, we have a bunch of teams playing today, and here are your names. We have the Drama Goons and their immunity idol, Cinco de Boomer, the four hoodies men, hoping for a win. Mom and Dad are here again, number 51. Cinco de Mayo, baby! Olaf's cool kids who are 70%, 70 cents per person richer, sorry. This is actually Elton John. No joke, I wrote Tiny Dancer. Bill Gates' divorce attorney wearing Joker makeup. Saturn's moon Enceladus, Enceladus, Enchilada, I don't know. Wednesday, authors of your favorite category, Dan Equality Diamond. Monkey will get eighth place tonight. Molly's Biggest Fans Redemption Week, Yohini River Rat, Five Crab Rangoons, Band-Aid, Jomo's Mojo, and Jupiter's Beard. Thank you all for playing. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the game. And round one of Fast Facts Live this week is the children of famous people. They have kids just like us, one leg at a time. Question number one. The son of architect Frank Lloyd Wright is responsible for what architecture-themed children's toy? 20 seconds, what's the answer? Question number two. Breck Eisner, the son of former Disney CEO Michael Eisner, was initially pegged to direct the 2010 reboot of what franchise, starring Chan Kong Sang doing his own stunts and the son of another famous actor and actress? What's the movie? Question number three. Sam Reich is a producer and director, now owner of the media enterprise College Humor. He's the son of Robert Reich, an economist who served as the secretary of what department in President Bill Clinton's cabinet? Question number four. Although the daughter of the great one, Paulina Gretzky didn't find love on the rink. This starts, this question starts off like it's a lifetime Christmas movie. Uh, but she found love instead on the links, starting a family with what frequent world number one golfer? And the last question of the round. John F. Kennedy Jr., the son of iconic First Lady Jacqueline Lee Jackie Kennedy Onassis and husband, crashed his Piper Saratoga in 1999 due to spatial disorientation on his way to what New England island destination? All right, that is it for round number one. If you scour the pages of People Magazine and thought, boy, this category will be easy for me, and then we're disappointed when we didn't have any questions about Chet Hanks, I apologize, but you should double or nothing anyway. Before we move on to round number two, my brother actually sent me the article because he went to the Northbrook Public Library a little while ago, and they found the article in the Northbrook Star about my grandpa, uh, about being on Jeopardy, it does not say local man loses. That has been the family rumor 
that has been passed down through the ages, through 30 years now. Um, no, the headline is Nearly a Champ. Um, which is not as darkly comedic, but it's, it's much more nice of a headline. Um, I will read you excerpts of the article as we go through the game, but we have to move on to round number two. And round number two is actually written by my brother Brian and his wife Trish. And this is things that didn't happen. I wonder what that means. Let's see, question number one. Officially, Lance Armstrong has never won the Tour de France. How many titles did he have before they were stripped in 2012 following doping allegations? Question number two. There was no winner of the Grammy Award for Best New Artist in 1989. It was revoked after a limp, limp sinking blunder. No, a lip sinking blunder led to the discovery that which duo never actually sang on their own album? Question number three. The United States Military Academy at West Point has a series of plaques commemorating every general who served during the Revolutionary War, except for one. Which famous traitor was given a plaque with a rank and date, but no name? Question number four. Richie Cunningham, played by Ron Howard, definitely doesn't have an older brother, Chuck, at least not after season two of what popular 70s sitcom also starring Henry Winkler? And the last question in the category. There are several terms for trying to essentially erase a person from history. A popular one is unperson, which was coined as newspeak, a newspeak term in what famous dystopian novel? That is it for this round. Thank you for, to Brian and Trish for submitting it. If you would like to submit your own round of questions to test people on Fast Facts Live, you can do so if you're a patron. Patreon.com slash Fast Facts Live and you are one of Charty's lovers. You will get to submit one round of questions per quarter season. But not like show season. Astrological like, season. Yeah. 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 Um, so, looking at the article, I do have to correct myself again. So, the front Wait, page... You're showing a lot of corrections. I am. The, uh, could you put the um, screen back up, Tom? Um, the front page of the article, I'll show you guys. Here we go. It says, right there, nearly a champ, right? However, that's just on the front page. There's my grandpa, looking stunning as always. Um... Uh, Look at how old he is in that picture. He was in the seniors tournament at like age 56 or something, right over the cutoff. But moving to the actual article on page seven, here we go, local man loses Jeopardy. And that's the quality that you can only get from hometown journalism. One final thing, it's not gonna be final. This is gonna be my running thing throughout the whole show. It's continued on page 169. 
How many trees did they kill for the Northbrook Star? I'll look into that and see what the answer is, and we'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll have more trivia on Fast Facts Live, so don't go anywhere. We're back at Fast Facts Live. I am joined by my aunt and uncle surrounding me on the left and right on the wall. If you would like to join the wall and wave to me from behind, you can. Just hit join the wall, open the wall on the page, on the Fast Facts Live web page, right above ChartyBot, and you can hop on screen and foment an insurrection as people have done over the past couple of weeks. Um, another correction to the Bob Olson story that we have going. Uh, I got a text from my mom. She says that it's probably page 16B and not page 169. Because now that I think about it, that's a little long for any newspaper. Um, and she said that they sent, they used the worst photographer and the worst photos. They sent a photographer to the house to take pictures and they were not good, apparently. As Tom, Tom pointed out, why didn't they just use pictures from the Jeopardy airing? 
That's a question that nobody can answer. I am totally blocking someone on the wall right now. It's my brother Brian. A big thank you to Brian for sending the article and for writing round number two. Um, and that's enough of him. Let's go back to the game. <laughs> thank God, we're back. I, I, when we went to break, I, could, I couldn't see the no, screen. No, 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 no. No, that's wrong, you're right. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, one more. Look at that. Let's just hope we're on the right slide. You know that we're on the right slide. Here are the answers for round one, the children of famous people. The son of architect Frank Lloyd Wright is responsible for what architecture themed children's toy. It's not Lego. It's Lincoln's log. Sorry, Lincoln logs. Question two. Breck Eisner, a good name, son of former Disney CEO Michael Eisner, was initially pegged to direct the 2010 reboot of what franchise? Starring Ch Chan Kong Sang, who you might know as Jackie Chan, doing his own stunts, and also starring the son of another famous actor and actress, Jaden Smith, son of Will and Jada Pinkett Smith. It's the Karate Kid. Question three. Sam Reich is a producer and director who owns College Humor. He's the son of Robert Reich, who was the secretary of what department under President Bill Clinton? He was the secretary of labor. Question four. Although the daughter of the great one, Paulina Gretzky, didn't find love on the rink, but instead on the links, starting a family with what frequent world number one golfer? It is Dustin Johnson. And last one. John F. Kennedy Jr., the son of iconic First Lady Jackie Kennedy and her husband, crashed his Piper Saratoga in 1999 due to spatial disorientation on his way to what New England Island destination? He was on his way to Martha's Vineyard. At the time, he was the editor-in-chief of the political magazine, George. Round number two, things that didn't happen. The moon landing. Officially, Lance Armstrong never won the Tour de France. How many titles did he have before they were stripped in 2012 following doping allegations? He had seven. He won seven in a row, and then they were all stripped because he did steroids. Silly man. Question two. There was no winner of the Grammy Award for Best New Artist in 1989. It was revoked after a lip-syncing blunder led to the discovery that which duo never actually sang on their own album. Let me tell you, that was Millie Vanilli. Question three. West Point is a series of plaques commemorating every general who served in the Revolutionary War except for notorious traitor Benedict Arnold. He made some great eggs though. Question four. Richie Cunningham, played by Ron Howard, definitely doesn't have a brother. Or at least not after season two of what popular 70s sitcom starring Henry Winkler. That is Happy Days. That's right, Chuck Cunningham disappeared. Have you seen him? Because nobody else has. And lastly, there are several terms for trying to essentially erase a person from history. A popular one is unperson, which was coined as a new speak term in what famous dystopian novel? That's right, 1984. That is it for the first two rounds. Let's move on to round number three. Round number three is tweets from history. BT, phone home. What we're gonna do is we're gonna show you a tweet. You have to say which famous historical figure said the tweet. And let me tell you, Tom did some wonderful graphic design on this round, and I think it looks very nice. I wouldn't say wonderful. I think it looks good. I'd say I did graphic design. <laughs> and that's wonderful, Tom. I recreated a tweet. A tweet isn't a work of art. <laughs> I mean, it could be an NFT. You mean a non-fungible token? No, a nice fudgy to dessert. Mm. I don't know where I was going. Question number one. Which famous historical figure might have tweeted, someone get me a cigar, at GB Bulldog? Question number two. At his airness tweeted, I'm back. Who is that? Tweet number three. 
at Bull Moose 12. Isthmus is a funny word. Question number four, at Super X1, Glamorous Glennis got to 1.05 today. Who would that be? And number five, at Lucky L, 30 and a half hours to Paris and no free peanuts? Come on, spirit! All right, that is it. Uh, let's hop off the tweeter now. If you spend way too much time on Twitter like I do, double or nothing. If you don't, I'm very happy for you. What's it like to be well-adjusted? <sighs> I can only dream. Let's move on to round number four. Round number four was the round submitted by my grandfather. Sounds like denizens of the deep. So this is similar to if you ever do crosswords. Uh, these are basically crossword clues. And remember, the Round name is Denizens of the Deep. So, you know, that might mean things that swim, to give you a hint. Anyway, clue number one. If it weren't for the T, it might be a doctor. What is it? 20 seconds. Number two, could also be a place to sit. Hmm. Remember, this round is Denizens of the Deep. These things might swim, you know? Question number three. A medieval weapon of renown. Question number four, this, number four, in a group, a fine place to vacation. And the last question of the round. A mispronounced evaluation of the quality of this category. 20 seconds, you're gonna love this answer. That is it for this round. Um, you, as I said, you are going to love seeing the answers and especially the answer to round number five. I do want to thank my grandpa, Bob Olson, for sending in that category. This is not the last that you will hear of him. No, he <laughs> sent me another round. Guess what? We'll be using that next week, so. Is it, is it easier? 
Uh, brush up on your crossword puzzles. I might add <laughs> letters next time to maybe, maybe lower the curve a little bit. Anyway, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will have the answers for rounds three and four and our toss-up round where you will see the delight that is the two questions that I wrote for this week. So don't go anywhere. We're back here at Fast Facts Live, and guess what? You thought the conversation about my grandpa's run on Jeopardy was over. It's not. My mom told me to look up my his games, uh, which you can find on jarchive.com. If you look up the Seniors Tournament for 1991, and she said that he smoked the competition going into the finals, and he did lose by one dollar in the end. And yes, he did. He had two lock games going into Double Jeopardy in the quarterfinal and semifinal, so nobody could catch up to him. He destroyed the competition. 
But then again, not not to take anything away from him, he was a in in, in comparison a strapping young man on the seniors tournament. He was in his mid fifties. He was playing against like eighty year old ladies on apple boxes. But still, he's a very smart man. Very proud of him, I can say. 30 years later, I don't know. Let's go into the answers. Tweets from history. Someone get me a cigar at GB Bulldog, sent from Twitter for Spitfire. Who might have tweeted that? Winston Churchill. Tweet number two, at his airness, I'm back, sent from Twitter for fame on March 18th, 1995. That's Michael Jordan. At Bull Moose 12, Isthmus is a funny word. Sent from Twitter for Steam Shovels, my favorite one. At Teddy Roosevelt, the Bull Moose. At Super X1, Glamorous Glennis got to 1.05 today. Sent for Twitter for Bell Aircraft. That was Chuck Yeager who broke the sound barrier. That's what that tweet is referencing. And lastly, at Lucky L, 30 and a half hours to Paris and no free peanuts. Come on, spirit. Sent from Twitter for France. That was Charles Lindbergh. You know, it's it's good for Charles Lindbergh for, for crossing the Atlantic. Bad for most everything else about him. Yeah, he's got his own Amazon Prime original series about how he becomes president and it's awful. You're telling me that the the the, the white ethno statist yeah. would be a bad president? It's a great book. Is it Man in the High Castle? No, it's, um, um, oh, why can't I think of it? I can't think of the name. I don't know. I didn't like the miniseries, but the book was pretty good. Oh, okay. Moving on to round number four. Sounds like Denizens of the Deep, everyone's favorite category from this week. Uh, question number one. If it weren't for the tea, it might be a doctor. You'd think that the fish is a sturgeon, but the doctor would be a surgeon. You'll see these, and I'll hope you'll react by going, oh, but you'll mostly react by going, ah, boo. Well, you should do more crossword puzzles. Question two. Could also be a place to sit. This fish is a perch. See? It's all coming together now. Number three. A medieval weapon of renown. It's a pike. The silence that I hear in here, I can also hear coming from all of you. Uh, in a group, it's a fine place to visit. Alone, it'd be a whale. A fine place to visit is whales. And lastly, a mince pronounced evaluation of the quality of this category. The fish is a crappie. An evaluation of this category is crappy. Thank you to my Grandpa Bob for that category. Um, as I said, this is not the last of him. You get one more week of this. Unless he just starts sending them in. Whenever he feels like it. We I don't know. He might. This is like the worst category. In worst terms category scoring-wise. <laughs> scoring-wise. There were a total of three correct answers. <laughs> across of the across whole everything. Uh, how many teams do we have playing right now? Oh, we've got at least 20. At least 20. So out of 100 or more submitted answers, Three, baby. Proud Quality. Of all of you. Quality. <laughs> uh, before we move on to round five, I would need to do some business with you. If you like Fast Facts Live and you want to support us uh, financially, you can do so on Patreon, as I had mentioned, patreon.com slash Live. We have different levels of support, which gets you different perks, like writing a question per category and stuff like that. You don't need to do that, though. If you want to give any amount of money on Patreon, you can do so. Any amount. You don't get the perks, but you get the support, which we are very thankful for. Or if you just want to do a one-time thing, you can go to the tip jar in Chartybot and drop some coinage into there. Uh, but as always, the best way that you can support us is by spreading the word, telling your friends, uh, maybe tweeting about us, Facebooking about us, Instagramming about us, whatever, what have you, spread the word. You know, maybe talk to people in real life, too. That's something that I don't do, but it'd be good for you to do, because that's a good thing for your mental health. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. It's past year, man. I've lost the ability. In the grocery store, I'm just like, get back. <laughs> Self-checkout. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, we are, we, are, we are doing a charity game to end the season on May. I don't have the calendar near me. It's the second to last Sunday of May. May 23rd, I do believe, is the date. 
Uh, correct me if I am wrong, Tom, but this is charity no, game. No, it's May 23rd. You, May 23rd. Everything you have said is correct. That's a first. Um, this charity game, 50% of all donations will go to the Hunger Task Force of Milwaukee and 50% of the other 50%, sorry, all of the other 50% go to the charity of the winning team's choice. We will have uh, a donation page set up for that. Maybe by next week, next week hopefully. Wow, you're really just- I'm just throwing things out. out. I haven't run any of this by Tom and he's the one who has to do that because he knows how to. Um, so mark your calendars for May 23rd and we will have more info for you. We will be doing a donation matching up to some amount. I'm not gonna throw that one out on air. Thank we God. We have to talk about that one. <laughs> uh, but just remember May 23rd, Fast Facts Live for charity. And now it's time for Charty and Fast Facts Live round five. It's the toss up. One week I'll change this to a throwdown and we'll just fight. Question number one. Rolling Stone recently released a list of the top 100 sitcoms of all time placing what long runner on the air since 1989 at the top? 20 seconds. Question number two. The diverging diamond is a type of what? Question number three. Cinco de Mayo, that's today. And it celebrates the Mexican army's victory over whom at the Battle of Puebla? Number four. Zach Wilson was drafted second overall to the New York Jets last Thursday, and he also looks like a Disney Channel star. His uncle is responsible for the founding of five airlines, including Azul Brazilian Airlines and what Long Island-based carrier? And the last question. What is the oldest NBA arena still currently in use? That is it for the toss-up round, which means that it is time for one more question. Well, technically two. Uh, and this category for what is the Hail Mary question, I need to think about because I don't know. Tom, what would you say the category for this round is? Numbers. Yeah, numbers. Numbers. Numbers, man. So pick a number between one and ten to bet. For the Hail Mary. Gonna it's not a bet, it's a wager. Okay. Functionally, Functionally the same. <laughs> Actually, I think definitionally. They are the, they're 100% the same. <laughs> definitionally the same. Yeah. Okay, we've given you time. And here's the question for the Hail Mary. The number 40 is the only integer when spelled out in English that has what characteristic? I didn't know this. Maybe you will. 20 seconds. And, just in case of a tie, here's the tiebreaker. There are 40 spaces on a standard Monopoly board. 
if every game set sold had one game played on it, with each game lasting the average length of time it's designed to take, how many seconds would be played of Monopoly? Too That's it for all the questions. All that we have left is answers and scores. So we're going to mark up the scores and see who won and come back after a break to tell you who the champion this week is of Fast Facts Live. So stay tuned, do not go anywhere. Howdy folks, we're back. We're all scored up and guess what? We have a winner. But before we see who the winner is, I'm surprising Tom with this. Last week winner, uh, winner of Fast Facts Live 50, are, were our friends Caroline and AJ who have a different boomer team name every week named after their dog. Um, this was the first time that they had ever won. They've been playing for 50 weeks for a year. So that's awesome. But uh, we got a text today from Caroline saying that she wanted a certificate of championosity. For those of you who haven't played uh, or newer to the game, prior to giving out cash, cash, money as a prize, we used to say that we would give out a certificate that I would make in Canva very poorly and then email it to the winner or Facebook message to the winner more likely. We stopped doing that because I just didn't do it and people would rather have money instead of the certificate. However, Tom, if you could pull up the screen again. Goodbye. We made one for you. Here is your certificate of championosity, whatever your boomer team name was last week, from our school principal, <laughs> Charlie Bot, and our vice principal, Fast Facts Live. The principal is an automated score bot, and the vice principal is a is a show. Yes. And that's how things work here, baby. Now let's...
Just got a text saying that they love it. I'm so happy. Now let's finish the game and see who won. You can see how slow I am at this, by the way. Anyway, number one, toss up. Rolling Stone recently released a list of the top 100 sitcoms of all time, placing what long runner on the air since 1989 at the top? That is The Simpsons. Question two. The diverging diamond is a type of what? It is an intersection, most commonly used as an interchange getting off the highway. Number three, Cinco de Mayo celebrates the Mexican army's victory over the battle, over whom at the Battle of Puebla? That is versus France. Zach Wilson was drafted second overall to the Jets last Thursday. His uncle is responsible for the founding of five airlines, including Azul, hint Azul, at Cinco de Mayo, that means blue, Brazilian Airlines, and what Long Island-based ca carrier? JetBlue, baby. And the last one, Technically, the only sports question. What is the oldest NBA arena still currently in use? That is Madison Square Garden, built on the corpse of Penn Station, the mecca of basketball. Which is the current Penn Station is a corpse. Yes. There, there is a quote from an architect that you used to emerge into New York from Penn Station uh, like a king or in grandeur. I'm not getting the quote directly correct, but this is the spirit of it. Now you emerge like rats from a tunnel, describing the current Penn Station. Um, look up what the original Penn Station looked like. It's really beautiful. Look at Madison Square Garden. It's really there. Hail Mary. The number 40 is the only integer when spelled out in English that has what characteristic? It's in alphabetical order. F to the O to the R to the T to the Y. That's in order, all the other ones they're just a jumbled mess of letters. I don't know why. And the tiebreaker, just in case. We didn't need to use it, but just in case. 40 spaces in a standard Monopoly board. If every game set sold at one game, only one played on it, and each game lasted the average length of time it's designed to take, which is really only like 90 minutes. 75 minutes. Yeah, but most games take nine hours and three relationships. Uh, how many seconds would be played? Just a cool... 1 trillion 125 billion minutes. Seconds. Which averages about to 525,600 minutes. But how do you measure a year? I use cups of coffee. I use inches. Miles, laughter, and stride. You don't use the metric system? <laughs> no, in fact, I measure in love. love. I'm not going to continue this. Measure in love. Let's see, who, let's see who won this game of facts. Facts. Anyway, in 21st place with negative three points, <laughs> we have Jupiter's beard. I have something in my eye. In 20th place with zero points, this is actually Elton John. No joke. I wrote Tiny Dancer, stick to music. In 18th place, Cinco de Boomer and Olaf's Cool Kids, who are 70 cents per person richer with four points. They, really, 16th, they really dropped. They did. In 16th, we have a tie between Molly's Biggest Fans, Redemption Week, and Tumbleweeds. Maybe next week with six points. In 15th, Cinco de Mayo, baby, has nine points. In 12th, we have a three-way tie between Mom and Dad Are Here Again, number 51, Band-Aid and Bill Gates' divorce attorney wearing Joker makeup with 12 points. In 11th, with 14 points, we have the Drama Goons and their immunity idol. In 10th, we have Yohini River Rat with 17 points. In 7th, we have a three-way tie between Hoping for a Win, you, the authors of your favorite category, and Dan Equality Diamond with 18 points. In 6th, betraying their name with 19 points, we have Monkey will get 8th place tonight. You did better! In fifth, we have Wednesday with 20 points. In fourth, five Crab Rangoons with 23 points. In third, the bronze medal goes to Joe Mo's Mojo with 24 points. In second, 32 points, the four Hoodies Men. And in first place with 39 points, Saturn's Moon Enceladus, Enceladus, Enceladus. I don't know how to pronounce the last word of your name, but congratulations on winning this week's edition of Fast Facts Live. You will be getting 
a hot and heavy Amazon gift card sent to your email box. Thank you all for playing Fast Facts Live this week. It's always a joy to have you here. A fly just flew in front of my face, and now I'm scared. Very special thank you to our patrons. You will have your names listed in the credits. Thank you to Tom for producing the show. Thank you for hosting. Ah! You're welcome! <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you to our social media manager, Molly Von Eschenbach, our Twitch czar, Dennis Tracy. We will be back next week here. Same fact time, same fact channel. In the meantime, everybody stay safe, have fun, wear a mask, and get vaccinated. Bye-bye!